Good morning, uh, Labor Day weekend uh, guests here at the Grace Hub Discipleship Ministries House Church Service. Uh, bright and early, 8 a.m., but it's nice and sunny out today. They said it was going to rain all weekend. You believe that? Yeah. Well, uh, I'm sure a lot of us have seen and heard the news headlines uh, lately. They've been pretty challenging uh, to hear, yet alone pray for, pray about. But from within our own backyard, uh, there have been some awful crimes committed recently. Uh, just north of here, uh, a soon-to-be-retiring cop gunned down in, in far west, uh, north suburban uh, Fox Lake, Illinois, uh, to a young woman uh, brutalized in her parents' home in the uh, southwest suburb of Willowbrook. In both cases, there has been the question to arise between the concept of good and evil, as well as uh, the notion of justice and righteousness, especially with we're still seeing a lot of turmoil about uh, lives mattering. Um, there you know, it was a whole campaign from those uh, victims that uh, were killed by police brutality and Black Lives Matter and um, now some people are saying that this is an issue of white uh, white lives matter which you know I think we just need to talk about life period matters right <clears throat> meanwhile on the other side of the world there is a human crisis that has made a small presence known though it's starting to build uh, on social media, but hasn't really been talked too much about in the news, uh, on, on the channels, news channels, on the radios. This crisis, this human crisis, is the systemic persecution of Christians and related groups of individuals by the agents of evil, known as ISIS, and other small little groups that are identifying alongside them. A little three-year-old, I think his name was Alien, a uh, three-year-old's body washed up on the shores of Turkey. Uh, other refugees fleeing Syria and surrounding areas are packing trains and fighting with one another to get a ride out of uh, this war-torn region. Uh, one of the videos I saw the other day on Fox News showed uh, a man with his wife and a, his infant child he was protesting. He was. They were trying to like drag him away from trying to squeeze onto the train, and him and his wife like laid down in between the train tracks that they'd rather die than stay. And um, this was in Hungary, I believe. And uh, just horrible things that were were beginning, just now beginning to hear about and see about how Christians are being uh, targeted and uh, severely persecuted. Turkey is the modern name uh, for the area that St. Paul and his fellow church planters traveled to, to in order to bring the good news of Christ abroad. I mean, Damascus, the, we hear Damascus a lot in, in some of Paul's letters and in the book of Acts. I mean, that's the area. That's the whole area of, like, the early churches, you know. And... Not too recently as well, there was a snippet on the news, just a brief little smattering, which I couldn't believe it was brief, of um, a beautiful ancient Christian monastery, one of the first ones, was brought to dust uh, by these same evil people, ISIS. Not too unlike the beginnings of World War II and the Holocaust to follow, these actions started uh, in World War II by an evil man, Hitler using Romans 13, believe that, to begin many of his speeches of extermination and ethnic cleansing and control government. We are seeing the diabolical fruits uh, today uh, causing a mass exodus into Europe. The little boy, as well as his other family members, were, were drowned. They were drowned trying to escape Syria is just as they say the tip of the iceberg of the horrors and suffering that this persecution is inflicting in the world right now. What on earth is ISIS being driven by? 
ISIS claims to be driven to commit these acts out of a strict fundamentalist faithful obedience or adherence to, quote, Islamic law. And a lot of uh, peaceful Muslims have said they're not Muslim at all, but they claim to be following a uh, Islamic law. It is more like human laws, if you ask me, inter invented by extremism and driven, motivated by partiality and hate, period. Hate in action. A heart hardened, driven by works righteousness, really is not faith, but can only cause destruction, as we're seeing and hearing about. Their capacity for murder, dominance, and destruction is only growing and gathering momentum. Though we're not hearing momentum really in the news media too much, the more we are indifferent to responding to it. All these headlines, news stories of recent history question our capacity by and through faith. Faith is reliant on inner transformation. Okay, Remember that it's always about this first church. Everything starts here. A heart turned to God. To exercise works naturally from a heart shaped by grace. This is the Christian journey. Luther's favorite author, James, yes, pun intended, he hated uh, the epistle of James. He called it uh, an epistle of straw. May have been seemingly speaking to satisfaction made and created by faith that may have been too much about building that works righteousness ladder back to God. And again, that's coming from a wonderful study. It's amazing how that book is uh, just... Seems to be kind of going with the flow of things that uh, we're, we're also seeing on Sunday mornings. Uh, that's a Gerhard Forty book where we just finished chapter four. And it's just wonderful how he's talking about the whole concept of the theology of the cross and uh, uh, works righteousness or natural faith righteousness, which is what we're really talking about today. This is our problem, though. We naturally have a tendency to rebuild a ladder since we can't get away from having a sense of self or the ego there that's my existential perspective yes the twenty dollar word of being in purpose but you know we are all too aware of ourselves as earthly creatures and all too easily bind ourselves and our actions to that old nature the old Adam the old Eve the disciple empowered and transformed by Christ in their heart would strive for selflessness, humility, and faithfully living into their natural will created by God in the greater scheme of all creation. It is, in a sense, a, a personal theology of your relationship to God and, in essence, embracing the cross and the resurrection of Christ as your saving motivation to build faith. All that we do from uh, an intentional inner transformation, that heart church, that first church, burgeoned by grace, is what God is seeking as a response to living into the lifestyle of grace for the glory of the kingdom of God. A relatively young police officer known as G.I. Joe Glinowitz was living a life connected to faithful service in small town America. And, you know, I don't know if any, how many people have been up to Fox Lake, but it sort of seems like Mayberry up there, you know. We watch the Andy Griffith show too much, too. But I digress. Outwardly and inwardly speaking, he was embodying gracious behavior naturally, authentically. Joe Glinowitz's natural behavior, in essence, was new nature behavior, purely produced by faith, not works righteousness. He was called to serve his neighbor, protect them, enforce the law, and be a kind and gentle person, helping to grow and keep the notion of a kinder and gentler world. I don't know how many of you recall they listed all the things that he, the charities he was involved with, the groups that he helped. I mean, it was amazing, you know. 
And he was a very humble soul about it, uh, from what many had said about him. The young woman in Willowbrook who fought off her attacker uh, appeared on the news the other day uh, with visually notable stab wounds to her face. Can you just imagine that? And it was even worn right by her eye, which she still has blurry vision from. And, they're, you know, it's all puffed up and bruised. She wanted to be a bold witness against the evil done to her. In some ways, you could say that her witness went well beyond being about what happened to her to be a voice against evil, period. Um, her father speaking on this, you know, he says, the home, the sense of home has been destroyed. I mean, he, he in the beginning, he was distraught and saying that you, we're never going to feel comfortable going in that home. What a sad thing to hear. She made an intentional effort to be a voice against evil in yet another small town American village for the sake of her neighbor. It doesn't matter where you are and where you come from is a part of the message here today. That's really a big part of it. God shows no partiality. It's very important. This is not only so with the story of this woman and the policeman, but in the Gospel of Mark's portrayal of Jesus, fully human, fully divine, active in this world, but living, teaching, and healing beyond this world, it's important to see. Though, when I first read this te text, I must confess, as Jesus sort of sounds like a jerk here, you know, he's like kind of being nasty, but, you know, that's more kind of Mark's impression of Jesus kind of in, in this immediate sense of, doing things and being active. Uh, Jesus' calling, as we know, was to the cross. And for his disciples, it meant living into taking up that cross and truly, faithfully, graciously following him. Jesus may have been exhausted, you know, we, we don't know. By the time the Syrophoenician woman uh, beckoned him for his help to save her daughter. Or maybe he was hoping for those flocking to him to see and contemplate the nature of faithful living and gracious response. Maybe he didn't want to be just seen as a Pez dispenser of, you know, healing something where they're not really going to understand what the healing means, you know. Um, Jesus opening the ears of the deaf man, I think, is very symbolic to how we hear. Uh, we Do we hear as well as adhere to the voice of God challenging our hearts to truly live into the new nature, the new creation, or not? Do we, do we listen here, from here? Do we allow ourselves to expand our capacity to spiritually grow, spiritually develop, to live into the dues of the gospel? Or do we just live, as St. Paul says to the Galatians, to just simply recreate the wheel of the law with all its self-righteous merits and seemingly intellectually driven progress. We may never satisfy the mysterious call of grace to live and walk purely by faith, but it doesn't mean that we shouldn't try. I never forgot the CPE unit I had, my first one, which was like boot camp, um, said the guy, the guy said, quit trying, just do. But he had a point. It's not trying for the sake of pleasing God and climbing that ladder of self-righteousness, works righteousness, building that ladder. It's a matter of being and becoming by, for, and through grace for the glory of God through love, kindness, mercy, peace, and all the beautiful fruits of faith naturally produced by a changed heart, a changing heart. Remember, our hearts, our lives of faith, our journey is always a work in progress. <laughs> the face and actions of a heart corrupted, though, and through and through, for the evil one's victory can only produce death, destruction, hate in action, as we're, you know, with ISIS here, as murder, desecration, and violation. The sad and awful picture of that innocent child washing up upon those shores of the lands of the early church should be a red flag for us 
and just how Satan has manipulated and distorted the egos of those called ISIS to bring about this death. The American media is not giving it enough time to air it because it doesn't sell well. That was one of the things I talked about with a friend, and he says, well, it's probably because it doesn't sell well. I'm like, yikes, what an awful thought. The European countries are experiencing their neighbors knocking and begging and crying at their doorsteps, yet some of them are turning them away. You know, they don't want to, I don't want to deal with this. That's what they're doing. If we can't or won't expand the capacity of our hearts to change for a greater purpose, <coughs> then what purpose are we really living for? Are we purely living for the world and for ourselves? Hi, the world revolves around me. This is a small planet, man. If we are not living for God and purely living for the self and for the world, we are creating death. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, open the ears of our hearts to the truth of your command upon us. Help us to truly become obedient to the hope and promise of the lifestyle of grace. Help us to realize and love our neighbor as you have loved us. You have loved us beyond our understanding. May we be and become what you truly need us to do. For your kingdom's glory and grace. Amen.